Hi everyone, I'm Pat Larson, the CEO of ZenLedger. Today I just wanted to tell you a little bit about how to create custom CSVs to upload into ZenLedger to help you with your taxes and accounting. Please remember that this video is just for education purposes only and you should seek your own uh, tax advice from your own tax professional. So what is a CSV? A CSV is just a simple spreadsheet format. You can use Google Sheets or uh, Mac Numbers or Microsoft Excel to create these CSVs. Uh, they are a single tab spreadsheet. So if you have an Excel spreadsheet that has multiple tabs and you save it as CSV, it's only gonna save the current spreadsheet. So why would you need to create a CSV? Well, you'll need to create one if the transactions you have are on exchange that doesn't give you the information you need, or you lost a wallet, or uh, it's old historical stuff, or it's just an exchange or wallet or currency that Zen Ledger doesn't yet support. So this is our way of creating that transaction history and bringing it into Zen Ledger so we can get your taxes done for you. So, how do you fill out this CSV? Here's what you'll do inside the application. How do you fill out the CSV? So go inside Zen Ledger, go ahead and click on the logo on the top left. You can then come down here and you'll see exchanges and then custom CSV upload. Go ahead and click on that. And then you'll see some instructions here on the right on how to fill out a custom CSV. You'll have this area here where you can click to send in the CSV you just created to upload it, or you can drag and drop in there. And you can download a sample CSV over here. So when you're inside the CSV that you downloaded, what you're gonna see is this. Now, uh, just going from left to right, this is how you fill it in. You'll have a timestamp, and this is in universal time code, which is what we refer to as UTC. That's actually just the time in London but um, many exchanges report your transaction times in uh, universal time code, UTC. So our spreadsheet does that as well. Uh, generally, you just have to, you know, Google time in London, see that it's, you know, 4 p.m. And right now uh, in America, it's, you know, 8 a.m. where you are and just make like a quick minus. It doesn't have to be perfect, um, but, you know, you just kind of need to get in the ballpark there. Then in type of transaction, you have a couple different kinds. You have buy, sell, trade, receive, and send. So buy is when you buy coins with fiat. So you go to Coinbase and you select buy Bitcoin uh, from my bank account. That is a buy of Bitcoin using dollars with a fee amount that's based you know, in Bitcoin on Coinbase. So a sell is when you uh, sell from coins to fiat. So the in amount is what came to you and the out amount is what left you. So when you buy one Bitcoin, one Bitcoin comes in and your $10,000 of USD goes out. When you sell you know, 0.9 Bitcoin, you know, $9,000 comes in and 0.9 Bitcoin goes out. And then you know you have your uh, fee amount in a different currency. It can be in dollars, it can be in Bitcoin, it can be in Ethereum. The, uh, the next is a trade. A trade is a coin for coin trade. So if uh, you buy one Ethereum with 0.4 Bitcoin, what comes in is one Ethereum, and what goes out is 0.4 Bitcoin. And then there'll be some fee amount, like 0 0.002 Ethereum. Receiving is when coins come into a wallet or exchange. Uh, it can be from external, like you uh, earn income in cryptocurrency, or it can just be transferring between yourself. You um, don't have to worry, our system tracks a lot of this. So you can just create one side of that. If you're, if you're sending from your wallet to an exchange, we'll usually get the transaction at the exchange that's getting received. So you just have to enter in the send from your wallet. For some reason, uh, the wallet's not picking that up. So when it comes to self-transfers, where it's a non-taxable event, where you're transferring between your own accounts on wallets and exchanges, the, the send or receive at the exchange will be captured. What you need to do is if for some reason the send or receive from your own wallet is not recorded, then you'd put it here in the CSV. So if I have my Trezor and I'm gonna send um, 3,000 um, Binance coins out, it would be a send out of 30,000 BNB from you know 
my treasure one. If uh, I am receiving, say I sent uh, 2000 uh, Ripple from Coinbase into my wallet and it wasn't recorded, then I would be receiving 2000 Ripple into my treasure one. And then our software can look at that and see that uh, the transaction was recorded as a send uh, out of Coinbase and then as a receive into your wallet and that'll be a non-taxable transfer. So to go over that again, we have timestamps and it's uh, in universal time code and you just put in the date first and then you put in the time in 24 hour. And if you wanna do it in 12 hour, you just make sure you add AM or PM, but uh, entering it in 24 hour keeps it nice and simple. Then you have the types, you have buy, which is fiat to crypto. You have sell, which is crypto to fiat. You have trade, which is coin to coin. You have receive, and the address um, that you're talking about here took in the coins. And then you have send, where the address you're using sent out the coins. And then for your own notes, you can add exchanges or wallet names to also uh, keep things straight. Okay, and a little more on using uh, Zen Ledger here. So our program cannot automatically update uh, CSVs that you upload previously. So if you have new trades, new transactions, you have to uh, update the CSV that you upload last time and then uh, load that into Zen Ledger, rerun your reports, and then we'll update all of your transactions and taxes. Our software already looks for duplicates, so you don't have to worry about that. And uh, for some reason, CSVs in general are very finicky in how they upload. So please don't alter this CSV file by uh, adding or deleting rows or columns or changing uh, file formats. So if you ever need to get a hold of us, you can just email us at hello at zenledger.io Go to our website at zenledger.io. Uh, go to our support website. Um, this is for individuals or CPAs. We're happy to help any of you out. We know this stuff is really tough, and uh, we're just trying to give you as many tools and automation as possible uh, to save you time. So thanks a lot.